Let's talk about some winners and some losers in today's training camp. We're going to start with who I think a winner is, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. It's Again, it's Amon Ross St. Brown. So far in camp and today, he has been unstoppable. The guy is getting the football, and he's beating the defense every single time he gets around the edge. He's catching everything. The guy has become a freak out there on the practice field. I was there last year at training camp. This is different. This guy is on a different level. I don't know if he decided to take some Viagra and it just blew up the rest of him and he's he's taken it to you know to that extent. But he is a big winner in my opinion. Mark Orham, who's a winner for you? And so far it has to be Aiden Hutchinson. I know it's he, this is the guy that is as advertised, you know, he came in, he came in as a number over number two overall pick. Um, he went out there in no pads, you know, weeks ago and dominated. Everyone's like, let's just see this guy in pads first, you know. Day one, he struggled. He's and then, you know, he's a kid that they that guys like Michael Brocker are, are already looking up to. They're saying that this kid's not even a rookie. He doesn't act like a rookie. He's he, he's uh, already a pro. You know, he kind of gives me those Amon Ross St. Brown vibes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just a consummate pro. He's doing great things week right off the bat. He's getting to the quarterback. He's making plays all over the field. He's as advertised. He has to be a big winner for not only himself, but for this organization. And just to be like, you know, a leader on this defense. He, and he's already being looked up to by, by seasoned veterans. And that's what I love the most. Anthony, when you, when you think of winners, um, who comes to mind? I'm kind of hoping you're going to say someone that rhymes with Ralcom, Rodriguez. But who is a winner to you right now? Some what, what you're hearing in training camp. Mike, please stop reading my mind. That's scary. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it is it is it is Malcolm Rodriguez because I mean the whole point of training camp is you know for you to establish yourself, for you to make a name for yourself, for you to put yourself in contention to play and. You know, a few of us have been trumping his horn ever since he got here. You know, he's we reckon he's more than a day three prospect. And everything you've heard from when he first got here, you know, when they first got their hands on him, he was showing them the mental aspect of the game, how he's years ahead of the development he should be in that aspect there. You hear how he's impressing with his attitude. And then it comes to training camp and you hear how he's impressing on the field. You know, this is a guy who started off just doing the special team stuff, then he's repping with the thirds, and then Dan Campbell comes out and says, look, we're going to have to reevaluate where this guy's playing, and they might have to bump him up the depth chart. And yes, people can go, maybe he's in a weak room, you know, maybe the competition level isn't there, but he's still performing to a level high enough that he's now on a pedestal with some of the more senior guys in this team. Just every time he's been presented with a challenge, he's given the answer. And that's what you want. So, you know, the rate he's going, the, the those of us who said that he's going to be starting sooner rather than later and he's going to play well are getting proven right. He's he's a dog out there. He's sideline to sideline. Now, obviously, he's, he's, he makes rookie mistakes just like any rookie out there. But the guy is an absolute dog. And you can see him out there because he doesn't quit. He's he's very a persistent guy. And he, he loves knocking people down. And, yeah, I agree with you. He's got to be a, a winner on this list. Mark, who is another winner? Who is a player that has stood out to you in a positive manner so far in training camp? In a positive manner, eh? Um... Guys like Jeff Okuda, man, he's come out, you know, he's 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 fighting through that, that adversity, being the third overall pick out of OSU. Big big shoes to fill, you know. Um, a lot of people did not like the pick. Hurt for two years, comes back, you know, in his third year, and he's out there playing pretty well. You know, he's not perfect right now. He's, you know, he's going through some stuff, um, but he's winning a lot of his battles, I'm hearing. He, he's, he's fighting for that number two spot with Will Harris. I really like the fact that this kid didn't give up, man. He, he came into camp in phenomenal shape. He didn't go into a shell. Um, he's trying to win that job. He He's a guy that, that I think is going to make a big difference on this secondary, man. He's a young kid. They're looking towards him as a leader, too, in this secondary. So I think Jeff Okuda, man, so far has been a winner, man. You know, he's not going to win every rep right now, but I think he's getting better as a player, and we just need him to stay healthy. 
Yeah, I got I got a winner here in Quintez Cephas. Um, just two reasons why. First, the injury is not severe, where it's going to be lasting him a whole season. He'd be out for a couple weeks. But besides that, he has been a dog in getting the foot. Every single time the ball comes near his way, he's fighting for it at that possession. How he got injured, he jumped in the air. He was, he was five feet laying on his back in the air, caught the ball and smashed on the ground, and still held on to the football. This guy's fighting for his life, and I don't think he needs to. I think, to me, he should be on this roster automatically. But this guy is really stepping his game up. And I tell you what, if that is who your bottom wide receiver is on this core for this season, NFL, look out. Scary wide receiver core because all the wide receivers have done fantastic. And Khalif Raymond, Leaf, is killing camp just like Amon Ross St. Brown. So look out for him and all of the wide receivers. Anthony, we, we, you, you did Malcolm Rodriguez. Who's another winner? And then we'll switch to some players who may not be uh, doing so well in camp. So for me, another one of the winners is Tracy Walker. And I say this not necessarily because of, you know, the way he's playing, but it's more the leadership aspect of it. You've heard all the bits coming out of there. He's, he's taking control of that secondary last year for him was about individually showing that he could be a great player on a consistent basis which he did he had a really good year amongst a load of bad guys around him but this year we need a leader in the secondary we've not had a guy in there since glover quinn left and god how how many years ago is that now we need someone to stand up take charge of it and really lead from the front and you know he seems to be doing that so if he can take on that leadership role this year as well as continue to play well and help the younger guys around him then that's absolutely critical for us this season so I'm, I'm glad to see that you know it's trending in that direction yeah 100 percent. he he has had a good camp and he you know that's what you expected i don't think there's a lot of question marks for tracy walker he's a solid guy we know we have with him he brings a a, a tempo and a a safety a safe at a safety position he's a safe player so i i like him a lot nothing wrong so far that he's done in camp and when you're not hearing about a player a whole lot that's not a bad thing i'm gonna j- jump on the, the, the loser list or the people that's not. Now, it's not for the player itself. It's because I haven't seen him due to injury, and it kind of goes off from last year. But I really wanted to see Levi and Uzurike this year, and I have not seen him in camp. I don't know the extent. It's probably just a little injury. But he needs yeah. to get as much reps as humanly possible. We need him out there on that defensive line. You know, he's going to be a really integral part to the interior. We need guys opposite of Aleem McNeil to really help out the defensive line. Look, we got Aiden Hutchinson, we got Charles Harris beasting out there, but the young man needs to get those reps. And hopefully he can heal up and at some point, you know, be contributing here in training camp and, and contributing week one. And that's more important than anything. I, he needs to be there for week one. Mark Orm, what is a player for you that may not be having the best camp? Well, you know, if you were to ask me this, like, a couple of days ago, I probably would have told you Jamar Jefferson. You know, it's it's obviously a guy that, you know, that was coming in, that was going to fight for a spot with Craig Reynolds this year. Um, he's already lost that spot. Now he's fighting with Godwin Iguibuque for that running back four position. Um, it's just really hard to to say if this kid's going to make this team. You know, Godwin Iguibuque can play some special teams. He's got the speed. You know, he had a little bit of fumbleitis. It was at the end of the year last year. You know, it's a guy that changed positions. But Jamar Jefferson was a draft pick by Brad Holmes. And, and I don't think he's really progressed. I don't think he's progressed because um, he's he's already sliding down, I think, the running back totem pole. You know, it's it's hard to call him. Like, I don't want to call the kid a loser because, you yeah. know, he's he, – he, he, but it's just that I don't think he's – now that they – you know, now that he's kind of going down this totem pole, though, last couple of days we've we've heard that he's doing some good things. But I think them going after and signing Justin Jackson, I think is kind of a bad sign for him. Even though Justin Jackson's got a big injury history, that kid's not a bad running back, man. That's a kid that was backing up two good running backs in L.A., uh, the Chargers, Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. He's a guy that can make some noise. Justin Jackson went healthy. So I think 
and you know, a a losing to Craig Reynolds, and then b bringing in Justin Jackson. I think it's a bad sign for Jamar Jefferson, and I'm rooting for the kid, man. I just don't think I think he's on the outside looking in right now. We're here with Anthony from Roar of the Lions UK. You guys got to subscribe to this channel. They drop in ridiculous content. The amount of time they spend on it, not just NFL and Detroit Lions, but they do college prospects, which I love because that is the second, I would say, on my channel is learning about the players who's coming in next year's draft and, and, and all of that. So make sure you guys subscribe. Who do you think potentially is not, you know, not a loser, like this guy's a loser, but not having the camp maybe – that they need to have? Well, like I say, I, I can't unfortunately be over there to see it with my own eyes, but one guy who I've been critical about and I've questioned on this roster who I really wanted to hear more about in this camp was Julian Aquara. I have not heard very much about him at all. I've heard Brad Holmes, uh, Dan Campbell talk about James Houston how Houston is doing well. He has a ways to go, but he's doing exactly what he needs to do there. I'm hearing about young guys like Malcolm Rodriguez coming in and playing really well. You know, I'm hearing nothing about Julian. I need him to be really good this year if I'm taking him on this roster because, like I say, I just don't trust the injury history. I don't trust the inconsistent play. I really wanted him to show out at this camp and make some big plays because, you know, they're doing all this stuff with the outside linebacker spot now. They're going to put a guy there. That's pre presumably where he's going to go and he needs to show he can do it. And again, it's just been sort of radio silence. So I'm concerned, really concerned with him. Perfect.